everyone, James from TDB here, bringing you another in between episode. Today, going to be drinking some uh, Ripe again uh, with my big blue pot that is <laughs> not so slowly falling apart on me, um, but I do have a replacement on the way. Uh, and going to be talking about a, another classic recipe and perhaps uh, one of the most classic recipes of all, the 7581. Uh, so this is notably uh, not a Dai or Shagwan recipe. Um, it is Kunming Tea Factory. The one at the end will signify that. And honestly, my belief is that if this recipe was a Dai recipe or something like that, or a factory better known for ripe, I think this would probably, um, you know, uh, it's very close to being a staple, but I think it'd be like kind of like 7572 or something like that, where it's very... Um, you know, it's a very common uh, thing to see around. And as it stands, you do see it around. One problem with Kunming Tea Factory is that um, the consistency is just not always there in the way that it is for other factories. So in my experience, the production quality of 7581s has really varied in a way that um, makes it um, kind of a gamble to just buy random 7581s. Um, I know that Yunnan Sourcing sells a 2007 one for around 40 bucks, and I have not tried that, so I don't know, uh, that might be a good one, but a lot of what I've tried um, and the ones I've really enjoyed are um, from the late 90s or early 2000s, um, which is frankly just an era of poor that is a little bit pricey. So unfortunately, in that sense, it does kind of limit uh, your options. Uh, but I am a big fan of good 758 ones. Um, it is a, a larger leaf recipe, um, as signified by the eight, it's been around a long time, developed in 1975. You'll usually see it in these sort of like 250 gram bricks. Um, I think it's also a recipe that you don't necessarily need superhuman storage on. I've had some Kunming stored ones that are really actually quite nice. And I tend to not be a huge fan of Kunming storage in, in general. In fact, I think if you're interested in those, you could sort of check out some older uh, episodes, um, probably from five or six years ago, where Denny and I reviewed that, um, that tea was from Yunnan Sourcing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I am a fan of this, uh, for people that really like this sort of what gets described as like red date flavor. Um, I think this is kind of your classical, uh, version of that. So anyways, uh, gonna start sipping on this. Already had a few steeps this morning. Um, so again, a very casual brew. Um, cheers. Yeah, it just has this really nice sweetness that's very distinct. Um, uh, just kind of that red date, as people call it, and like a little bit of fruit, um, maybe a little bit um, kind of lychee-like. And um, yeah, it's known to be a little lighter fermented, so uh, the color you're going to get will kind of vary depending on the storage. Probably a tea also that, because it is lighter fermented, will benefit from a little bit more time. Um, so the version I'm having is from the 1990s, uh, is from a tea's we like blind sample, and it's so distinct that in my notes I actually called it correctly uh, as a 7581, um, that it was a very red date and 7581-like tea. So um, there you go. Um, so you know, the color is a little bit lighter than what we'd expect, um, uh, like, a, like a Monghai 7572 from the 1990s to be, but you know, that's fine. I think that's sort of par for the course. Probably would have gone a little bit longer using nine grams, 175 milliliters here. So very, very woody, uh, woody fruit nose to that. Um, the smell of it is pretty different, um, I'd say, from normal uh, ripe too. So interesting. Cheers. Yeah, so really sweet. I'd definitely say it's like sweeter um, than those. And sort of the backbone of it just feels quite different from normal um, ripe, which I think has like these certain wood tones that are tend to be fairly dominant. Um, and this one, uh, a lot less so. In fact, I could see people that are in general not fans of ripe uh, really liking um, something like this too. And yeah, um, uh, I dig this tea. Um, I think uh, it's a really solid recipe and definitely one that people should seek out and see if they can get a good version. Um, I know Yeon does sell 7581. Uh, this, unlike most of uh, the teas from Yeon, is probably one that doesn't need that sort of like heavier storage. Um, 
So uh, if you can, you can seek out sort of a lighter fermented one. The Yun one is decent enough, in my view at least, um, to sort of give you a reference point for that. But unfortunately, it's from the 90s, so not a cheap tea, uh, but uh, uh, definitely uh, worth checking out 7581, seeing if it uh, hits you in the right way. Kind of an alternate to sort of your st standard Meng Hai Tea Factory uh, stuff that kind of represents the industry standard for ripe. And yeah, it's a, it's a shame that uh, something like this is a little bit trickier to buy than your Meng Hai recipes, but it is what it is. Um, so let me know how you like this. Let me know if you had some experiences with 7581 and if you like them as much as I do. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. I will see you all next time. Cheers. Forgot to give it a rating. Uh, this is a 7.0 rating, so thank you all.